John Fredriksen is one of the richest men in the world. In his home country of Norway, they call him the Big Wolf. He stays out of the public eye. His metier is the sea. He owns ships, oil platforms, and salmon farms. The south of Chile is a wilderness paradise. Salmon farms are springing up like mushrooms here. And the largest investor is John Fredriksen with his company, Marine Harvest. Year after year, 100 million salmon are raised here for customers in Europe, Japan, and the United States. One third of the world's supply. From above, the water looks peaceful, but below the surface, it's teeming with salmon. 200,000 per cage, 1 million per farm, twice the amount allowed in Europe. In Chile, environmental regulations are lax. It's a paradise for investors. Christian Soto is one of 50,000 people employed in the salmon industry. He's a diver, and his workplace is the cages in the ice-cold water. 40, sometimes 60 meters deep. He cleans and repairs nets and removes dead salmon that have succumbed to disease. This is a colony of sea lions. These big predators are protected by Chile's environmental laws, but that doesn't keep the salmon industry from hunting them down. It's a perilous job for the divers. The sea lions attack. Salmon are what they eat. When they get into the cages, we have to take them out. Caretakers often shoot the sea lions. Then we have to go down and make sure they are really dead. That's a life-threatening task. Simplemente decides no hacerlo y diplomáticamente se te va a pedir que no entres a trabajar más. If you refuse, you lose your job. Last year, a sea lion pulled me down into the depths by my leg. My swim fins and diving mask were torn off my body. También hay mucha basura. The ocean floor is covered with trash from the salmon farms, nets, pipes, tires, batteries, along with a thick layer of salmon excrement and undigested food pellets. It settles to the bottom of the sea and kills all living things there. Flora and fauna die. Marine Harvest shows us a different, perfect world. They have invited us to visit a farm in the Rolancavi Fjord. Above the waterline, everything looks clean and pristine. The fish are fed with pellets to accelerate their growth and fatten them up. They put on four kilograms in just 18 months. Wild salmon need six years to achieve that. The salmon in this fjord alone produce as much excrement as the population of a city of one million inhabitants. The cages are often so crowded that the salmon nearly suffocate. Then compressed oxygen is pumped into the seawater. The company's quality manager sees no need for concern. We constantly monitor the amount of biomass released into the water. If it's more than allowed, we just jostle the production. That is the reality of marine harvest. Dead fish must be disposed of. The salmon virus ISA, a fatal disease, is prevalent in Chile. The salmon die of internal bleeding, there is no remedy. The virus has spread so rapidly because the farms are much too close to one another. 
The carcasses are sealed in these red containers and subsequently disposed of. Have there been any cases of ISA here in this fjord? No, not that I know of. Not in this fjord, as far as I know, and certainly not at any marine harvest farm in this area. You can ask the government fishing office. A few kilometers away, we found this marine harvest farm. The virus is widespread here. 800,000 salmon were culled here on orders of the health department. The farm is under quarantine and will be closed for a few years until the disease has run its course. When the disease breaks out, the salmon die, sometimes two or three thousand of them per cage daily. We have to get them out of there. These cadavers here were in the cage for a few weeks. The farmers aren't able to get rid of them. We stuff them in these bags and hang them back in the cage until they can be picked up for disposal. The stench is indescribable. We work without protective clothing. Cochamo, a fishing village on the banks of the fjord, a village in crisis. Nothing else thrives here anymore but salmon. 38 salmon farms are just too many for a single small fjord. Stevens Arenas, the chairman of the Fishermen's Association, shows us around. There's a salmon farm on the other side of the fjord. A fisher has caught some escaped salmon. That's illegal. How many did you get? Salmon that escape from their cages are considered the property of the company. Poaching is punishable by jail. There was a mass outbreak of 130,000 salmon here. These fish are predators that are not indigenous to the environment here in Chile. They eat everything, smelts, kingfish. There's nothing left for us. If you own a vicious dog and it attacks a person on the street, whose fault is it? The victim's or yours? Because you didn't lock up your dog. The clams are dying out too, because the seafloor is buried under excrement and leftover food. There used to be a big clam bank over there. Now it's dead. When we press charges against the salmon industry, the authorities say, we're sorry, but there's nothing we can do. We decided to confront marine harvest with the accusations of the fishers. Although there are other industrial salmon producers, marine harvest is Chile's largest polluter, with a total of 70 farms. The company takes us on a tour of a lush natural paradise on the edge of the cold rainforest to the new Rio Blanco salmon farm. Adolfo Alvial is technical director of marine harvest in Chile. He has agreed to answer our questions, but first, he wants to show us his pride and joy, the ecological breeding station. Clean, good for the environment, with independent water circulation systems and biological filters. This facility is growing the fattened salmon of the next generation, 10 million of them. I feel like Alice in Wonderland here. We've seen some totally different conditions out there. You are in the real world here. This is a land of miracles. This facility shows the change of direction that marine harvest is taking. This is where we want to go. I admit, there's still much to be done. 
we met fishermen saying that the industry has destroyed their sources of income with the contamination, biological death of some areas. It's very sad what I'm going to tell you, and it's sad for me to tell you, but I have to tell you that as a Chilean, I am very also affected by the destruction of natural resources by fisheries before than aquaculture. The depletion in, in, in here of uh, coastal resources was in the hands of fishermen. I mean, long before that we arrived here. It was a very rich zone, the, the 10th and the 11th, in terms of coastal resources, like locos, uh, uh, machas, and uh, many other resources, erizos, and those were depleted by a very poor management of the fishermen, artisanal fishermen, and also by lack of efficient regulations. Chilean and North American marine biologists have investigated the consequences of salmon farms on the fjord. Their findings? Many species are dying out or are being decimated. There are too many farms here. There was never an environmental impact study. Nobody knows how many salmon farms the fjord can stand. Its water takes 40 years to renew itself. The industry itself is already also suffering under the pollution that it has created. They have made so much money on salmon, they could at least invest a little of it in investigations to determine how many salmon can be farmed sustainably here, instead of just going for the quick profits. The salmon industry is our enemy. Oslo, an exclusive party during the International Shipping Exhibition. Rumor has it, John Fredrickson will be here tonight. But in the end, only his twin daughters show up. They are highly prized. They stand to inherit somewhere between five and 10 billion euros. And they already hold positions on the boards of their father's companies. Catherine dabbles in ships, Cecilia in salmon. The next day, John Fredrickson turns up on the Oslo Promenade. A happy coincidence, because there is virtually no film footage of him to be found. His recipe for success? Whenever a company hits hard times, he snaps up its stock and takes control of it. He is already running seven global companies. We wrote to him and asked him for an interview. His answer? Not interested. He never gives interviews. Only two Norwegian business journalists have managed to meet Fredriksen when they were writing a book about him. Its title was The Big Wolf. It was actually in a restaurant and we were uh, meeting for several hours. And in the end of the meeting, he said that, uh, look guys, I don't want this book to come out. So I would like to offer you some money for uh, not writing the book. And we said, uh, okay, we played along, how much? One million, he said. And then Harald said, uh, you mean, obviously, one million dollars? Yes, uh, he said. Uh, and you asked each. <laughs> <laughs> each, of course. And then, and then later on, it, they were doing a, a deal on the napkin, writing, I hereby declare, and so on. And then he, uh, his assistant said, it was two million dollars, he said. Yes, and I once again said each. <laughs> How came <laughs> that he became in fish farming the biggest in the world? Just by accident, I think. Um, uh, one of the big banks had a big shareholding in, in, a, uh, in a large um, company in this industry. It was for sale to a lot of He saw the opportunity, this was cheap, and then when they got this, they started to, to merge other companies into it in a very fast, very fast. And uh, yeah, so before the dust, when the dust settled, it was certainly the biggest in the world.
Instead of an interview with Fredriksen, Marine Harvest offers us a tour of the fantastic world of Norwegian salmon. Also on board is Peter Arnesen, the company's technical director. A marine harvest factory in Hjelmaland. Salmon for the world. Chicken of the sea, say gourmets, disparagingly. Business is good. Marine harvest has a sales volume of 1.5 billion euros. But does it make any sense to maintain huge fish farms in the ocean? The salmon are fed fish meal and oil produced from herrings and other small fish. This cycle endangers the stock of ocean fish even more. In Norway, the company has more regulation to deal with than in Chile. Here, the government closes down farms that release too much pollution into the water. Licenses must be renewed every year. In Chile, they're valid for life. The cages here contain only half as many salmon as those in Chile, and the farms are farther apart. In Europe, marine harvest presents itself as a green-oriented, environmentally friendly, transparent organization. So this is now um, the Norwegian salmon, which we have produced. It's uh, four or five kilos. And as you see around, we have 12 cages of uh, 17,000 cubic. They are 30 meter deep, these nets, 40 meter in the cone. I will now put it on because it needs to be in the water. How does it feel to your thing in your uh, cages? In my conscience, I think this feel fish has uh, what I believe. The fish has a good life in the sense these fish, we are trying to give them fresh waters every day. We have clean nets and uh, the density is low. We don't move them, we try not to touch them. And uh, usually you can see if the fish is uh, happy. It's like us. If How they, can you see it? How I see this fish is happy. I see they swim, certain pattern. I see they jump, like you see, they play and uh, they grow in according to the, our plants, they should grow. And uh, when we don't have any dead fish, it means the fish is okay. So now you can see he's, <laughs> he's a bit sleepy. <laughs> Marina harvest in Europe, everything is fine, brilliant, the nice side of the business. And in Chile, you leave uh, ecological cemetery. Yes, um, that's, I mean, we, 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 as Marine Harvest, we are working to transfer the practices that we have from places like Norway to Chile. Some even say Marine Harvest brought the virus through egg importations from Norway. Yeah, this is uh, something that, uh, of course, uh, is uh, is not uh, correct. I mean, we have not brought uh, the virus to Chile. Why, why? Why should we do that? So, how can you explain that most outbreaks were in marina harvest farms? Maybe at least in the beginning, our experience from knowing how how this actually looked uh, made it easier for us to to actually um, uh, detect uh, that uh, our salmon had uh, ISA. So you would exclude the idea that marina harvest has to do with the ISA import to Chile? Yeah, that's... Uh, I mean, you can never be 100% sure of anything, but uh, it's, it's doubtful, very doubtful. But I'm, I must say, in, in general, I would have liked to have been more prepared for this interview. I would have liked to have the questions uh, beforehand. Mm. 
Meanwhile, back in Chile. To spur production, millions of salmon eggs have been imported from Norway. A scientific study has shown that the deadly virus was imported into Chile in this way. American multimillionaire Douglas Tompkins has founded the world's largest private nature reserve here. He is engaged in a small war with his neighbors, the salmon farmers. The densities and the closeness of cages uh, make a so-called economic efficiency. You are able to mechanize it and control it more when it's in tighter and tighter spaces. But it leads to the disease that undoes the industry, you see? So it's better to forget the whole aquaculture. With his Pumalin Wilderness Park, Douglas Tompkins has preserved large portions of Chile's cold rainforest. But a few years ago, he himself was one of the pioneers of globalization. He had garments for his brands Esprit and the North Face manufactured cheaply in China. Then he sold his companies and invested his money in saving the wilderness. John Frederickson says only what serves the shareholders' interests is good for the company and is good for the world. That's it. Yeah. It's believing. Well, there you are. That's what he says. Yeah. Well, he better go back to the conceptual and ethical drawing board and rethink that one. So that's, that's where we've got it backwards, you see. When we think that what's good for us, that is us, the company and the shareholders, is good for the world, that's the most fundamental mistake. And we've been wrong about that. And we have to live by the opposite notion. That's what's good for the world, therefore, um, should be good for us. In my view, far better employment, a vibrant, long-term, and truly biologically sustainable industry, if there was well-controlled artisanal fishing. It would provide far more jobs. It would provide a better livelihood. Is the direction of aquaculture the right direction to, to lead an economy? So we're trying to get rid of bad jobs. And good economies shouldn't have bad jobs. Jobs that are leading to, to the kinds of collapse that we've seen in this industry. <laughs> The fish market in Puerto Montt. The city has blossomed as a result of the salmon farms, which created thousands of new jobs in and around Puerto Montt. Chile has become a global player in the nutrition industry, but the progress comes at a high price to the local population. Native species are dying out or becoming rare, and they are full of antibiotics. The industry is pumping 600 tons of antibiotics into the cages each year and the food pellets it feeds to the salmon. Many bacteria have developed resistance to the antibiotics. In the view of pharmacologist Umberto Dolz, a professor at the University of Valdivia, this uncontrolled use of antibiotics is a ticking time bomb. The salmon industry is importing 10 to 12 times as many antibiotics as the entire health system of Chile. In Chile, the industry uses the same antibiotics that are used to fight human illnesses, above all, fluorochinolone. The industry is skeptical that the resistance caused by salmon production could be passed on to humans. But of course they are. That has been scientifically proven. The transmission occurs through all kinds of substances people come into contact with, water, seafoods. Here in Puerto Montt, we have determined that the local population is more resistant to antibiotics than hospital patients who often come into contact with similar bacteria. 
What are the consequences? These antibiotics, which today are still saving lives, will be useless here in the year 2020. There's little evidence at the fish market of the former diversity of species in the Pacific Ocean. But there's plenty of inexpensive salmon. A kilogram costs one and a half euros here. Some of the salmon comes from stock infected with the virus and cannot be legally exported to the US or Europe. The salesman assures us that the salmon was caught fresh off the coast of Cabuco, but diver Christian Soto is doubtful. Every morning between 8 and 10, we remove the dead salmon from the cages. It is put into sealed containers. On the way to dispose of them, the salmon is stolen and ends up here a few days later. That's where all this salmon here comes from. Do you ever buy here? No, never. The life of the 6,000 Chilean divers depends on a kind of garden hose that provides them with oxygen. The hoses are often damaged and tear, or the divers get tangled in the nets. Then they have to get help from above. As a cost-saving measure, there's often no safety diver. Our license allows us to dive to a depth of 20 meters but the cages are 40 meters underwater. They don't coerce us, but if you refuse, someone else will do it. At a depth of 40 meters, there has to be a decompression chamber within 500 meters. The industry says that's too expensive. For them, a dead diver is cheaper. Last year alone, 18 of my colleagues lost their lives. More than 100 divers died in the last 10 years in Chile. You know, you, you, the, 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 in Norway, I think one. So that's a big difference. It is. It how, is. How is it explainable? No, it is. It is not explainable. I don't think it should be explained. I can argument against the 100 eh? because I'm totally, totally convinced that the, those are not necessarily working in activities connected with the industry. Many divers, many times, are divers which are just getting shellfish in the coastal area, and they are charged to, to as, as responsibility for the industry, which is absolutely not, not unfair. But it doesn't matter. It could be 10, it could be 12, it could be 20. It's not the point. Uh, any single one could, should die. Christian Soto documents the accidents. For example, the one at Marine Harvest Pulchilco Farm on the 26th of August, 2007. The diver didn't have a valid license and damage to his equipment cut the flow of oxygen. There was no safety diver nearby. The victim was Pedro Pablo Alvarado, 29 years old. He died repairing the net that protects the fish from sea lions at a depth of 40 meters. During the investigation, the company maintained that the accident occurred at a depth of 20 meters. Everyone knows that can't be true. Besides that, Pedro Pablo was forced to dive during a storm, although the Navy, the authoritative agency, had prohibited diving in the area. The diver was forced to dive in spite of the ban? Not only during this ban. In the salmon industry, diving goes on all the time, even if there's a storm. No one pays any attention to diving bans. That's how my colleague died. In this case, there was a closed Pedro Pablo Alvarado. Two years after his death, Marine Harvest was forced to pay a fine of 2,000 euros for disregarding safety regulations. The prosecutor declined to file charges of manslaughter.
y ese fiscal marítimo eh, siempre. Whenever there's an accident, the prosecuting attorney comes to the same conclusion, and I say this carefully. The only person responsible for the death of the diver was the diver himself. The law doesn't protect us. That's very unfair. Yes, I'm afraid to dive. My family has to get used to the idea that someday I won't come back. John Fredrickson has stated his personal philosophy. Whatever is good for the stockholders is good for the company. What price do the Chilean divers have to pay so the company can pay dividends? Excuse me, John Fredrickson, may I ask you one question? Just one question. No comment. The king of the salmon industry presents his latest creation to the world, a salmon wrap for McDonald's. Fredrickson runs his empire from an office in London. With a staff of 18 financial experts, he negotiates deals worth billions. The son of a welder, he has amassed a global empire, including Frontline, the world's largest shipping tanker company. Because he finds the tax rate in Norway too high, he has renounced his Norwegian citizenship and become a citizen of Cyprus. Fredrickson goes fishing for wild salmon in the Naustal River in Norway. They're not biting. The stocks have been decimated due to parasites and illnesses carried by the farm fish. When the wild salmon swim past the farms, many of them become infected and die. Fredrickson's latest move is an affiliation with the World Wildlife Fund. The salmon industry needs a new, greener image. The agreement from April 2008, industrially manufactured salmon now carry the Panda logo of the WWF. You let use marine harvest, your good name for propaganda purposes. There are many ways of being a, a, um, an environmental organization, and we all have different approaches to how we do our conservation work. WWF works with industry, trying to change industry. Other NGOs don't. They stay on the outside. Uh, however, as Marine Harvest is one of the biggest companies in the world, it's also one of the biggest polluters, consumers of fish oil and fish meal. And they're a very major player within the fish farming industry. And if we can change them, we're actually changing a huge part of the industry. In Chile, there's no sign of change. It is noticeable, however, that the WWF is holding back its criticism. This troubles local environmentalists like Hector Kohl, a marine biologist who formerly worked as a project developer for the salmon industry. Today, he advises the fishermen's associations the industry regards him as a traitor. In Norway, you're allowed to use one gram of antibiotics per ton of salmon produced. In Chile, there is no restriction. They use up to 800 grams, 800 times as much as in Norway. That information is taken from the company's environmental reports. Within a single year, at a single farm on Reloncavi Fjord, Marine Harvest mixed as many antibiotics into the fish food as the entire Norwegian salmon industry, at just one farm. The salmon eggs are already a chemical product. They are treated with fungus, including carcinogenic substances like crystal violet and malachite. The young salmon are pumped full of antibiotics. 
Then, unknown quantities of chemical substances were applied to the cages, including anti-fouling agents that contain heavy metals. And the fish food is a chemical product. It contains a pigment that makes the salmon nice and pink. Nature proves us right. It's not possible to mass-produce salmon in a sustainable way that doesn't damage the environment. The companies are in the business for a quick profit, with no regard for the marine environment. WBF acknowledges that this is an industry which has a lot of benefits for coastal communities. It creates jobs and income, and it is an industry that we think will continue and that we don't see should be totally closed down. We are an unbeatable team. All I want is to work for Marine Harvest, to be one of the best. For salmon industry employee Maurizio Lopez, the Marine Harvest song sounds cynical. As a union leader, he has been confronted by the social consequences of the viral epidemic. The salmon companies have fired 25,000 workers with severance pay of one month's salary, about 200 euros. Marine Harvest still owes this colleague two years of employer contributions to the pension fund. People here are helpless and desperate. It's scandalous that environmental protection organizations like WWF are cooperating with Marine Harvest. In Norway, they sign a bunch of documents, and we here pay the consequences. Because now, in Chile, WWF is claiming that the industry is clean and good for workers. When you read the documents, you understand what's going on. The WWF is applying a double standard, just like marine harvest itself. Do you believe that sustainable mass production of salmon is possible? Openly and honestly, no. Salmon is not indigenous to Chile. It was brought here. It might be possible with indigenous fish like hake or other species, but you might as well bring elephants to Chile and breed them here. It can't be done in a sustainable fashion. The mess, the chaos here is marine harvest's fault. They brought the virus to Chile. They are to blame for our unemployment. We could uh, stop the dialogue, but do you think the world will look better? Do you feel good with it? It's a challenging partnership because they're a huge international partner and they have a huge ecological footprint. It's a process. It's going to take time to, to make the changes and to get them implemented. And it's going to probably take time to, uh, to see the results as well. Do you get money from them? from Marina Harvest? Yes. There's uh, funding support to the... There's money involved in the agreement, so we get uh, support for our marine conservation work here in Norway. Mm. How much? Uh, uh, it's... Um, is that in euros or in NOC? Never mind. Oh. Uh, it's around 100,000 euros annually that WWF Norway get. Whose bread I eat his song, I sing. Mm -hmm. Isn't that a danger? Yes, and that's the challenge we meet with all our industry partnerships. But as a global organization, I, I would say that we're quite prepared to, 
to work with big industries uh, and to keep criticizing them, although we take financial support from them. Director Arneson negotiated the partnership agreement with the WWF. We were not allowed to examine the language of the document, in spite of repeated requests. Marine Harvest didn't agree to any concrete requirements, and especially not for its locations in Chile. That's strange. They had prices in Norway and other countries too. It's enough of experience, I would say. But in Chile, you didn't learn from the experience. Unfortunately, uh, we had, uh, uh, or we had not learned uh, the lesson from other countries good enough. So, unfortunately, yes, it happened in Chile. Bear is now advertising Akies, a sedative for salmon to treat stress. The business continues to grow. Some salmon farms have gone bankrupt because of the virus, and Marine Harvest has bought their facilities. Director Alvial thinks everything will get better now. John Ferguson, he's an investor. He wants to get money out of it. Yeah, but, but this investor uh, who knows that this business is a long-term business, and I'm sure that he, if he hasn't that view, he had just abandoned this idea because there were, you know, enough losses and, and problems as to say, well, but, but I'm convinced that he's convinced it's that, it. yeah, that in a sustainable way, this, this, this industry, aquaculture in general, not just salmon farming, can really do, uh, not just do a very good business, but also it could be a very good response for a need in, in the people. I mean, our features are collapsing everywhere and, and we have to produce what the features are not going to be able to produce. The red containers in front of us are full of dead fish infected with the ISA virus. They must be transported away under heavy safety precautions. We trace their tracks. Final destination? a fish meal factory. This is where dead salmon and refuse from the salmon factories end up as fish food. They are processed into fish meal and fish oil and later pressed into pellets. Recycling, Chilean style. The heat in the ovens kills the salmon virus. The fish meal factory primarily processes anchovies, valuable protein-rich fish from the Pacific. Instead of the fish market, they end up here. Producing a kilogram of salmon requires killing about five kilograms of wild fish and processing it into fish food. The salmon industry destroys much more animal protein than it creates. For this reason alone, it can't possibly be sustainable. There's no future on a dead planet. There are no jobs on a dead planet. And the industry is producing a dead planet. There's no diversity, no economic diversity. Just like there's, there's no diversity out there in the oceans because they're reducing it down to one species, salmon. And all of these things, all of these things are coming back to haunt us because we forgot that um, um, we're part of a, of a natural system. And let the sea, the, let nature uh, be the manager, so to speak, uh, because nature knows how to manage the ocean. We have four billion years of evidence. Chilean fishermen are fishing in the Humboldt Current, one of the world's most productive marine ecosystems. Every time they go out for a catch, they bring back 90 tons of anchovies. They too work for the industry which has purchased most of the licenses issued by the government. 90% of all fish caught off the coasts of Chile and Peru 
end up in a fish mill factory. Look at them, how small they are. They're not even capable of reproducing yet. A healthy biomass we are driving to extinction before they are capable of reproducing. There won't be any left for future generations. It's a crime that our entire catch will be turned into fish meal. What if another famine comes? Are people supposed to eat fish meal? We are no longer free fishermen. We go along with this to survive. In truth, we are slaves of the industry, the transnational corporations. Marine harvest ends its relationship with us on the beach of Cabuco. We have been tipped off by the salmon workers that this slaughterhouse is releasing wastewater treated with chlorine into the ocean. The entire beach is dotted with marine harvest facilities. After just a few minutes, the director of the slaughterhouse appears. Hello. The way you were filming here, as though we had something to hide, it proves to us that you have ulterior motives. This is a public beach. Yes, but the facilities and franchises are private, owned by Marine Harvest. You are allowed to pass through here, but that's all. What does that mean? Well, for example, if you don't have permission to be filming, I would like to ask you not to take any pictures here. Today, nothing is being pumped through these pipes. But a few days later, this photograph was taken at the same place. Wastewater treated with chlorine is being pumped into the ocean. Following this visit, Marine Harvest stopped talking to us. A visit to Malinka, a small island at the end of the world that makes a living catching clams and algae. At a farm belonging to a Chilean company, half a million salmon died in their cages from a lack of oxygen. The company left the salmon in the cages to rot. Malinka's coastlines are contaminated, but so are the clams that are the lifeblood of the people who live here. The clams, they're all dead. We have nothing else. Malinka will be a desert island. This one is still alive. All the others are already dead. From one end of the island to the other. How much is a salmon worth? In Chile, a salmon is definitely worth more than a human being. Yesterday, I caught a total of nine crabs. When I got home, my son asked, what happened to all the crabs? What am I supposed to catch when I grow up? I didn't know what to say, and I told him not to ask me anymore. The way things are now, they've killed our ocean.
Just one question about salmon industry in Chile. We have been there, and it's a disaster for nature and for the yeah, men working there. I, I'm, a, I'm a salmon fisher, so... But you own Marine Harvest. I own, have own salmon. part of it, but I'm not uh, sorry for, uh, for, for all this, but uh, I, I'm, I'm not involved in that uh, kind of operation. So you don't feel responsible for the crisis and the catastrophe there? It's, uh, I'm not involved in that such, so I, but I'm sorry for, for everybody. Mm. Det är så väldigt glasa att filma in i restaurangen. Du gärna filma det senare men inte in i restaurangen när du sitter och spiser. Sorry, yes. English. No, sorry, you can't have the camera here because uh, they're sitting eating there and you... Uh, okay. Sorry about that. So you have to take it away.